Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity of loving you and knowing you and knowing that you've won the victory by your death on the cross and your resurrection. But we are in a battle, spiritual battles. And help us to understand that you've given us tools so that we can walk in victory. We can walk in joy. We can walk in positive thinking. Not just positive thinking, but victorious Jesus thinking. So help us so that we can understand and manifest your blessings in our life that can overflow and influence our community and eventually the world as Jesus Christ is Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What I like about this scripture is there in verse 4. Weapons of our warfare are divinely powerful. We have been given weapons, spiritual weapons, from the Lord to battle against forces of darkness. There is no secret that the devil is alive and well on planet Earth. There is no secret that he's going to try to destroy your life. In fact, I, I tell people that are going through a hard time, I say, I want you to remember something. This is very important. The devil is not trying to hurt you. I want you to listen to that. The devil is not trying to hurt you. He's trying to kill you. And we have been given divinely powerful weapons. Now for the next few weeks, I'm going to be sharing about these weapons and how we can use them to live a victorious Christian life. We can use them as a church so that we can grow, so we can love each other more, so that we're together, so that we've got, we're growing individually in our knowledge of the Lord and in our Christian attitudes. And we can also grow because we'll see more people coming in and we will be able to be the church that Jesus wants us to be. Because the devil's at work trying to destroy us. But we can be aware of his ways. And we can confront that with the divinely powerful weapons that the Lord has given us. When we talk about spiritual warfare, a lot of people wring their hands. They go, oh no. And I'd like to share with you really quick three errors, three mistakes that are commonly made when it comes to spiritual warfare. The first area of mistake is that some people do not give it uh, enough consideration. They minimize the idea of spiritual warfare. We're afraid sometimes. I've heard people say, well, if you don't talk about the devil, he won't try to mess with you. Don't, don't confront the devil. It'll just make you mad. Well, that's a little being a little naive. Other people will say, well, you're into spiritual warfare. I can tell you're always rebuking the devil and you're always talking about, about ways to, to, to do that. But me, my ministry is with children. I want, I want to work with children, so that's my ministry. You go over there and rebuke the devil all you want to. My ministry is with children. Or my ministry is music. I want to sing in the choir and, and, and work with the music. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you're not aware of the, the attacks of the devil against your ministry, you're not going to be successful working with children. And you're not going to be successful in a music ministry or whatever the ministry is. We must be aware of the devil's devices and come against it. And one of the problems we have is, well, we just don't want to think about the devil. But that's, that's being too naive because the devil thinks about you. And he's plotting to destroy your life. And he's plotting to destroy this church. So we have to be aware of his ways. The other mistake is to overdo it. To constantly, we see, some people see demons under every rock. I went to a church one time and they were so devil conscious, I actually took out a piece of paper, turned the bulletin over, and started marking the times they, they mentioned the devil's name and the number of times they mentioned the Lord's name. And they were constantly talking about the devil. And by the time it was over, I thought, well, geez, some people are ready to join his side. Sounds like he's going to win. And he's not, you know. You read the back of the book, we win. You, win the, you read the back of the book, Jesus comes back in victory with his family, with his church, with the mighty army of the Lord. In the Bible, we're called many things as the church. And one of the epistles, it says, you know, you're a mighty army with weapons, walking forward in victory, marching in victory. 
And we want to do that, but we don't have to focus so much on, on the devil. We focus on Jesus. If the devil comes knocking at your door, send Jesus to answer the door. You don't have to run and do all these crazy things. You know, we, just, we can very calmly look and be aware that we have an enemy. We can be aware of, his, of his, the ways he's going to work and the way he's, he's going to try to destroy us. And because we know these things, we can use wisdom and we can confront that. We can also take the divinely powerful weapons that we're going to learn about in the next few weeks and use them so that we can walk in spiritual victory. Um, the third mistake most people make, and I think this is the most common mistake, is to understand that we do not war with flesh and blood. It says in the, the scripture we just read, weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. In uh, Ephesians, the passage that I was going to use, it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But too often, we will confront people. There's a person who's giving us problems. There's a person that is obviously being used by the dark side to try to destroy us. And we'll come against that person. But there's nothing, there's nothing greater than to read about someone who used to walk with the devil, who used to try to do all these horrible things, but then they saw the light and the love of Jesus and they, and they 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 embrace Jesus. They want to come to Jesus. If if you're if you have a co-worker that's giving you problems at work, it's not the co-worker that's your enemy. You're not battling against the co-worker. You're going to battle against the spirit that is leading them to do those things. So continue to love people. Because it's so common for us to look at somebody and think that person is your enemy. That person is not your enemy. You love them. You win them as a friend. You can bring them to bring a friend Sunday. And we can tell them about the love of Jesus. And, and if they stop, uh, if they embrace Jesus, uh, your life could be a whole lot easier. Of course, it would be a test to see if you've really been embracing Jesus. Maybe they've been embracing Jesus all the time. That's why you might have problems with them. But you see what I'm talking about. Our enemies are not the people that are around us. The enemies are the spiritual forces of wickedness that's trying to destroy us. So love people. Focus on Jesus. Love Him and allow Him to be the Lord of your life and the ruler of all that you have. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the great victory that you've given us on the cross. And we thank you that because of the Holy Spirit that you poured out on us, all over this world, we can walk in victory. We have to make a choice every day. Are we going to follow you and do things your way? Or are we going to try to do things our own way? So help us to draw closer to you, to focus on you and the beauty of Jesus and the victory that you've won for us, Lord. And let us take your victory and make it our victory every day that we live so that we can live in victory and our congregation can have victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This Sunday is the first Sunday of the month where we're celebrating communion and our communion uh, ritual is found on page 12 in your United Methodist Hymn Book. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. 
Now look on page 13 under the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And he blessed it. And he broke it, and he said, take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And I always have to say this, because at that supper he had, there was a number of ritual cups that were drank. And this cup, this one particular cup he took, was known as the cup of redemption. That we are now redeemed. He took this cup and he gave thanks to you, Lord, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. It's my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ is that. Christ is Christ is Christ is Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with one another and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. This time I'd like to ask those who are going to assist me with communion to come forward to be served. And David, if you could come too. Oh, there you are.
I do want to welcome you to the table of the Lord. It is the Lord's table, the table of Jesus Christ. And we invite you and we encourage you to join with us as we together celebrate Holy Communion. So that's how we'll follow the directions of our ushers. Jesus, I ask that you pour out your spirit so that all these that are knelt at your altar now can walk in victory. And we thank you for your love and your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name, amen.
symbols of bread and the cup so 